The Buffalo Bills are in win now mode, baby. And I don't mean 13 regular season wins, a trip to the divisional round playoffs and back home either. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about, fam. I'm talking about Super Bowl or bust, baby. Yeah, I said it. Super Bowl or bust. Now, I get it. Listen, say what you will, all right? But we're not talking about the same old drought era bills anymore. The stakes could not be any higher in Buffalo. And believe you me when I tell you this much, Brandon Bean and the rest of his staff is no doubt feeling the pressure of unfulfilled expectations the past couple of seasons for a team that was supposed to be quote-unquote championship caliber. Now listen to this. If this team has another head-scratching postseason exit in 2023 with a generational quarterback in Josh Allen at the helm in his prime, a top-five wide receiver they paid a premium for, a future Hall of Fame pass rusher, and high-quality talent at other positions across the board, it might be time to find a regime who can deliver the baby. And this is why I believe that Brandon Bean and his staff will be all in this offseason, in free agency, and no doubt the draft as well. Now, I know what he said, right? I know. He, he says this all, often. Not to expect a big splash in free agency, yada, 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 woo, 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 whatever. But he said the same thing last year, too. And he still managed to find a way to land the big fish in Vaughn Miller, who, oh, by the way, did not take a discount. So I'm calling Cap, okay? I call Cap on all of that nonsense. And speaking of Cap, we all know it ain't real anyway. So with that being said, Here are three big decisions that Brandon Bean will make in free agency this offseason on my mama. Let's get into it. On my mama, number one, retaining Jordan Poyer and or Tremaine Edmonds will not be a top priority for Brandon Bean and the Bills this offseason. Yeah, I said it. Now, listen, although the final four playoff exits featured less than stellar defensive performances by the Buffalo Bills, I would say that it had more to do with coaching blunders than execution or the defense in general. You know what I'm saying? Which is why I am now a firm believer that defense no longer wins championships. Coaching and high offensive output does. Now, with that being said, I wanted to do a little bit of research. In order to get a good sample size of data, I went back over the past 10 Super Bowls and took an average of the points scored by the winning teams. All right, you with me? Now, over that time span, the winning Super Bowl team scored an average of 34 points. Now, that number would have been higher if not for Listen to this. The lowest scoring Super Bowl in NFL history when the Patriots defeated the Los Angeles Rams 13-3 in Super Bowl 53. On my mama, number two. The top priority of the Bills this offseason will be on the offensive side of the ball. Now hear me out. We are now in an era of high-flying, high octane offense that's supported by NFL rules that favor these aerial assaults. The top three regular season scoring offenses this past season in 2022 were number one, the Chiefs, who scored an average 29.2 points per game. Number two, yours truly, the Buffalo Bills, scoring 28.4 points per game. And then number three, the Philadelphia Eagles scoring 28.1 points per game. Now, the regular season is not enough, right? So let's dive into the postseason and take a look at those numbers. The top three postseason scoring offenses in 2022 of the teams who played two games or more, okay? Because, you know, you can play one game in a wild card round and just, you know, 
have a miracle out, output on offense, you know, but then go on the division and, and then lose that game or whatever the case may be. All right. So the top three postseason scoring offenses in 2022 of the teams who played two games or more were number one, the Philadelphia Eagles, who scored a whopping 34.7 points per game in the postseason this season. Number two, the Kansas City Chiefs, who scored 29.3 points per postseason game. And listen at this. And third place was the Jacksonville Jaguars, who scored an average of 25 and a half points per postseason game. You wondering where the Bills are? I'll tell you where the Bills landed in the postseason. They landed at six. Sixth in scoring. <laughs> and they only averaged 22 points per postseason game this season. You see, it's no coincidence that the top two scoring offenses in 2022 and the postseason ended up facing each other in the Super Bowl. The Eagles and the Chiefs. Now, both of those teams in the Super Bowl put on an offensive clinic with a final score of 38-35 in favor of the Chiefs. It's all about offense, baby. It's all about offense. Which leads me to my last on my mama. On my mama number three. Understanding now that offense is king, Brandon Bean will do this. He will reallocate the money he would have spent on re-signing Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Poyer towards acquiring two key offensive free agents. At least two. Let's dive into it a little further, shall we? Number one, Nate Davis, guard, Tennessee Titans. Nate Davis is 26 years old right now, coming off of his rookie contract. According to SpotTrack, his market value is roughly $7.4 million in average annual salary. Okay? Now, listen to this. This is the idea that I believe that Brandon Bean is going to use, okay? Remember, he's reallocating the money that he would have spent on Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Poyer and putting it towards these two offensive free agents, okay? One of which could be Nate Davis. $7.4 million in average annual salary, according to Spot Track. Number two, Ben Powers, guard. Baltimore Ravens. Again, another 26-year-old free agent coming off of his rookie contract. And according to SpotTrack, he has slightly more uh, average annual salary. They have him at $9.4 million in average annual salary compared to Nate Davis's 7.4. Okay, so it's a couple of more million dollars. All right, what's a couple million dollars? Not much. But Ben Powers coming off of that, coming from, from uh, Baltimore, you know, with, with that power run scheme in Baltimore. Same as Nate Davis in Tennessee. You see the trend here? Oh, let's not forget we got Aaron Cromer, offensive line coach. I know many people will think that Aaron Cromer did a bad job in year one, but could it be that he really lacked the talent on the interior? Okay. I'm willing to give him more time. Why? Because when I look at his track record, he has a track record of success when it comes to coaching offensive lines. And of the offensive lines he's coached, they led the league in rushing, especially when he was here in Buffalo. Remember that? Yeah, of course you do. Free agent target number three, again, on the offensive line. And that is this. If they are, if they fail to land Nate Davis or Ben Powers, they could always transition or pivot to this particular player right here. And that is Trey Turner, guard of the Washington Commanders. Now, Trey is not 26 years old like Ben Powers and Nate Davis is. Instead, he is a little bit older. He's 29 years old. Okay. But let me tell you why Trey Turner could be a, a, a potential target for Brandon Bean and the Buffalo Bills this offseason. 
He was drafted by Carolina in 2014 and played on that on that team from 2014 all the way until 2019, which means that he played when Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott were a part of the organization. <laughs> he spent time with both of them. I know we we always say, you know, the pun is that, you know, well, Buffalo has turned into, you know, Carolina North. Well, let's not poo-poo at that, okay? Because this could be another potential former Carolina Panther landing in Buffalo again. We'll see. But he could be a potential low-cost veteran-free agent on the market if they are unable to land Nate Davis or Ben Powers, or if, you know, by any chance, like, like say, they're, 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 they, they, they signed for a lot more money than what SpotTrack currently has them listed as their market value, okay? So they can turn to Trey Turner. Okay, who well, according to Spot Track, they have a market value of him at two point six million dollars in average annual salary. So that's a that's a pretty decent uh, uh, savings, right, from Nate Davis and Ben Powers if they are unable to land one of those guys. I get it. We're used to Brandon Bean with these band aid additions on the free agency, right? In free agency, I understand that. But remember, but let me remind you of this. Any potential free agent acquisition that Brandon Bean acquires in free agency this offseason should not preclude them from addressing that position in the draft, okay? I'm just saying, Trey Turner might not be a bad signing if they're unable to land those two guys that I mentioned before. Now let's pivot. Remember, we're still on the offense because I said offense is king, and this is what Brandon Bean is going to do this offseason. Moving away from defense. Forget the defense. It's all about offense now. Let's look at the wide receiver position. Because I believe that the two key offensive free agents will come in these two positions. Offensive line and wide receiver. Wide receiver number one. DJ Chark. Wide receiver Detroit Lions. DJ Chark is 26 years old, okay? He's not coming off of his rookie contract like Ben Powers and Nate Davis, but he's still very young. Matter of fact, last year, this past season, he signed a one-year, $10 million fully guaranteed contract with the Lions after his rookie contract, okay? Um, a pretty good wide receiver in his own right. How he can fit in the offense is still to be determined, but a big body guy with decent speed uh, experience. I think adding weapons to the current arsenal that Josh Allen, the offense currently has, will not hurt one bit. Give them as much talent as you possibly can. Okay. Now, Spot Track currently has DJ Chark valued at $9.5 million in average annual salary. Again, you're going to find out just how Brandon Bean might be able to reallocate those dollars that he would have spent on Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Poyer into two potential free agent acquisitions on the offensive line and at the wide receiver group. Okay? So DJ Chark, DJ Chark excuse me, number one, $9.5 million in average annual salary. Wide receiver number two, Miko Hardman. Wide receiver of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, we as Bills fans know him very well, okay, because he has run past our defense on multiple occasions. <laughs> Miko Hardman is an interesting guy because he is only 24 years young. Very young. Very young, okay? And we know what he offers, right? And it's something that is missing in this offense, and that is speed, speed, and more speed. Miko Hardman has elite speed. We know it. We've seen it firsthand. Getting a guy like him on this roster, in this offense, will only add more fuel, will only add more firepower to this offense. In the same way as, as he, in a way, put fear in defenses, especially the Bills, is if he's on this team, he could do the same very thing. 
four other defenses. All right. Now, only thing is, according to Spot Track, he's a little more expensive than, than DJ Chark. They currently have his market value set at $10.3 million in average annual salary. And so it's a little bit, it's a little bit more than DJ Chark, but you have to you have to find out what you're willing to pay for and what you're getting in return. A speed guy like that blows the top off the defense. How valuable do you think that type of an asset could be in this offense? I think it's extremely valuable. But we'll see if Brandon Bean agrees with me or not. Wide receiver target number three. Interesting one. Maybe under the radar to some Bills fans. Darius Slayton. Wide receiver, New York Giants. Slayton is 26 years old. Again, coming off of his rookie contract. Do you see a pattern here? I think that Brandon Bean is going to target these types of free agents. These guys who are coming off of the rookie contract, but, but who's needing to prove themselves. And maybe they've proven themselves to a degree and they're looking for a second contract, but they're not necessarily going to break the bank, right? Or maybe they're looking for no, they're looking for an opportunity to prove themselves on a one-year deal, two-year deal. I don't know. But Darius Slayton is coming off of his rookie contract. What I like about him is that he provides inside and outside flex meaning he can line up in the slot or he can line up outside. Playing with the Giants, in my opinion, especially last year, is a plus because he played under Brian Dayball, who we all know designed that, our, that offense, right? Which is the same offense that Ken Dorsey is running to a degree. So he already has familiarity with the scheme if you were to come aboard the Buffalo Bills, right? So um, you can you can you can suspect that the learning curve will not be very difficult for him. And on top of that, according to Spot Track, he will only cost three point five million dollars in average annual salary. Now we all know that. The market is fluid, right? It's a fluid situation. All it takes is one team to 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 pull a, a Christian Kirk, right? And 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 overpay one guy to get to 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 get him on their team to blow the comp to blow the market completely out the water, right? But for now, where it stands, this is currently how Spartrack has these players ranked and listed. Okay. I think. If Brandon Bean is able to land these guys, look, let's take a look at Nate Davis, for it, for example. Nate Davis, guard, Tennessee Titans. If Brandon Bean is able to land him, that's $7.5 million average annual salary. Remember, when you combine the market values, I don't know if I mentioned that, but Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Poyer, according to Spot Track, they both have an average annual salary of $11 million. Now, Tremaine Edmonds may blow that number out of the water. He may come slightly under it. Uh, or Jordan Poirier may, may be higher, or he may come under it. I don't know. Time won't, will tell. But according to Spot Check, right now, both of them average eight, 11, and a, $11 million in average annual salary. So that's roughly tw that's $22 million to be allocated in average annual salary. Okay? That's the number that I'm working with here. Now, if Brandon Bean reallocates that number, from Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Poirier to these two potential free agent acquisitions on the offense, Nate Davis averaging seven and a half mil. Okay, let's just say he's a target here. We get him seven and a half million dollars average annual salary, and then we land a wide receiver like DJ Chark, nine and a half million dollars. Okay, you see what I'm talking about here now? Now, what is that? Seventeen million dollars right? An average annual salary. That gives you more cushion, but roughly four to $5 million extra that you can use somewhere else. Maybe you want to acquire another free agent, a low cost free agent, or maybe you want to take that money and, and, and re-sign some of your own free agents. I don't know, but what I am saying is this $22 million is a decent amount of change to land these couple of players. 
if the market holds right now. Okay. I could do the same thing for, for Ben Powers, 9.4, or just to say $9.5 million, and they decide to go ahead and get Miko Hartman at 10. They still have a little bit of cushion, okay? But what I am saying is this. Brandon Bean has, he has some work to do, no doubt. But I am not buying that this 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 saying that he's not gonna be uh he's not gonna be a big spender in free agency. I'm not buying it. What I'm saying, he's gonna be aggressive in free agency. I'll say that. I'll say that. He's definitely gonna be aggressive in free agency, and I think he's gonna target offense. Offense, offense, offense. That's what I think he's going to do, and that's what I think he should do. Offensive line, wide receiver. And as I mentioned before. Adding either of these players from these positions should not preclude Brandon Bean and the Buffalo Bills from reinforcing those same positions in the draft. Okay? We all know his M.O. Fill as many needs as possible in free agency so that way when it comes to the draft, he's not desperate. He can take best player available. That's what he likes to do. I'm thinking this offseason, starting in free agency, he is going all in baby and all in on the offense which is what he should do let me know what you guys think in the comments below whether or not you agree with me or you disagree with me let me know maybe some players that you think that brandon bean should or would go after in free agency maybe it's a completely different position i don't know you let me know what you think until next time ladies and gentlemen this is your man rev signing off as always grace and peace god bless and go Bills. Let's get it.